Welcome back everyone to another video today. This video is going to be incredibly important for anyone running Google Ads. This is going to be my ultimate Google Ads checklist. Things that you really need to take into consideration and just double check that you are sort of implementing, doing things correctly. Now, Google Ads isn't just about Google Ads. You know, the success of a Google Ads campaign or a Google Ads account has a lot to do with what's happening beyond. So on your website, Merchant Center, all those sorts of things we're gonna be covering in today's video. I do very quickly wanna mention if you're struggling with Google Ads, need a bit of help, one-on-one -on -one sort of thing, do drop me a message on Instagram. I will always be available to help anyone if they are struggling with Google. But like I said, it's not just about your Google Ad account. It's gonna be about Merchant Center, obviously the ad account itself, and then your website. So we're gonna be covering those three things today. There's a lot of things to cover in each section. I'm gonna try and go through it fairly quickly so this video doesn't drag out too long, but it's gonna be very useful. And I may put this in some sort of PDF document. So again, if you want me to do that, I certainly can drop me a message on Instagram and then I can email or you know send over the PDF for this checklist. So you can keep you know referring back to it. So you essentially don't need to keep this video open once you finish watching it. Now, obviously, I specialize with e-commerce businesses with Google. I have my own e-commerce businesses. I help e-commerce businesses and other clients um, who sell on Shopify and WooCommerce and things like that. And in order to benefit uh, greatly from Google Ads, you obviously need a Merchant Center account so you can be running Google Shopping campaigns and attach your product feed to Pmax campaigns and so on. Now, there are a lot of ways you can improve your results within the ad account by making changes over in your products on Merchant Center. Now, one of the key things is going to be your product title and description. This isn't going to be your Shopify product title and description. I've been through this quite a few times already. This is going to be the SEO or meta title and description that Merchant Center take from your product feed and use to you know, show your products to the correct audience. And these titles and descriptions, you want to be using as many keywords as possible to describe your products, but obviously make, you know, you're not going to put irrelevant keywords in there. You want to put the most relevant and highly searched terms in these titles and descriptions. So your products will essentially have the best chance of reaching the most people, but more importantly, the most relevant customers as well. So just an example on this image here, the titles you're seeing here, if you click one of these products, these aren't going to be the titles you see on the landing page. These are what you know Google call the SEO or meta titles and descriptions. If you use Shopify, you can go onto your Shopify product page, scroll right to the bottom of the product editor page, should I say, and you'll have the uh, section that allows you to change the title and description that Google uses. But now you can also do this directly within Merchant Center itself. You just need to click on a product and update the title and description. Yes, it's boring, it's very important, and feed optimization really is um, extremely important for, you know, making the most out of the products you sell because if you don't ever touch it then you really are limiting yourself with sort of the reach and potential market that your ads are showing to so please do bear that in mind okay sorry about that i had to move my camera because it needs charging anyway price optimization again something very important nothing too much to say about this other than if your product's getting you know in both ways your product might be getting a lot of spend but you know very few conversions or it might not be getting a lot of spend at all in either of those situations, a good thing to test is a new price point. You could price it higher. I've had this work for my own products. If you price it higher, yes, you might see a dip in traffic, but the overall perception of your product makes it it makes it look more premium. And you know, if people are still converting at the same conversion rate, you're making more per you know per sale because you're selling it for a higher price. So don't always take price optimization as okay. I've got to be the cheapest on Google. You might surprise yourself test both ways yes you're going to get a lot more traffic if you sell it as you know cheaper than your competitors but at what point are you going to just make a loss because you're selling it too cheap sometimes increasing the price helps as well now another thing is going to be image optimization again very important if you've got a low click-through rate or again you know little spend little impressions you can test a different product image. If you're drop shipping from AliExpress, there's a good chance that you know other sellers on Google are gonna be using the same pictures as you. And obviously that's not gonna look good. You know, if you're appearing on a search like this and there's two or three other sellers with the exact same picture, 
what reason are they going to click on your product? So you want to have your own pictures, whether you're enhancing some pictures with AI or taking your own pictures. My point is just have your own unique pictures. And another thing, white background pictures, you know, they do work for some businesses, but in my you know experience, lifestyle images always work better. And just go, you know, go ahead and do a Google search for your best or high spending products just to see what types of images your competitors are using. A great example here, I've used this before, uh, pizza ovens, you can see the majority of sellers are just using a white background image. But if you're using a lifestyle image like the first one here or this one here, for me anyway, this just stands out much more and it just helps. It helps show off the product a bit more. The product being in use like this one's a really good picture. So this is definitely another angle you can test and optimize within uh, your Merchant Center account. And you can make all these changes now within Merchant Center. You can change the product image and things like that. Um, another thing as well, not too important, but just something that you can do um, is, I mean, this screenshot here is from the Symprosis uh, Shopify app. Just fill out as many sections as you can for each of your products. Things like the material, the color, the age group, the gender. Um, you don't have to do all of these. This is just an example of one of my products. Um, and you can see I've only, you know, I've only listed a few extra sort of features of the product. Yes, I could probably add more. But one thing that is probably important, more important than the ones you see here, should I say, um, is getting the correct product category. Now, you can do this yourself within an app like this or in Merchant Center. I would advise doing this because if you leave it blank, you're leaving Google to interpret your product and to categorize it um, itself. And I've seen in some cases they can get it incredibly wrong. So to save that error, make sure you're categorizing your products correctly um, within Merchant Center or if you use a feed app like this. Um, and a couple more points, especially that are often overlooked, but certainly can help your click through rate and things like that is gonna be things like returns policy, shipping policy, making sure those are all done correctly in Merchant Center because if you've got you know free delivery, you want people to see that. So a great example of this here is comparing these two products. Now, you've got a white background image, not a lot going on here. You've got a lifestyle image. Again, you can see which one of the images is clearly better. But the other things that are going on here, you've got the free delivery uh, label here and you've also got product reviews shown here. So this you know, product card here stands out so much more than this one here, despite it being almost double the price. So if you can add anything like this to your shopping feed, definitely do it. It really will make your brand stand out, increase those click through rates and hopefully the overall sort of profitability of your ads. And finally, with for the merchant center section, just check it every day, every morning, make it part of your routine for your business, log into merchant center and just make sure there's no errors. Now I see a lot I think it's just with Shopify. I have a lot of products that get disapproved and it will say unavailable on mobile or desktop, for example, unavailable landing page when I'm not sure why this happens, but you can go in there, click a uh, request to fix button. Google will automatically crawl your product page again and it will instantly be approved. And before I made this part of my regular sort of daily routine, I'd have products sometimes disapproved for three or four days before they're automatically approved again. And obviously that's three or four days worth of sales you're missing out on. So just go ahead and check it every day and just regularly go through some of these points as well. You know, if a product's getting no spend, but you really do think it could get, you know, a good number of sales if it got the traffic, just go ahead and start testing more different, you know, SEO titles, test a different image here and there. Uh, you'll be surprised what little changes like this, you know, that they could have a really big impact on your overall performance. Now, moving on to the ad account, actually, out of the three sections we're covering today is probably the least, not the least important, but there's the least you sort of have to sort of keep an eye on here in comparison to Merchant Center and then what's going on on your website. So quickly jumping into it here. Google Ads conversion tracking, I say this all the time, you should not be spending a penny on Google Ads if you haven't got conversion tracking correctly set up. If you need help, if you need me to refer you to my guy to do it, drop me a message on Instagram and we can arrange that for you. Proper account structure, again, very important. Check out the video I uploaded before this one. I go through how I structure my Google Ads account, my clients as well, and it's a very good way to efficiently test products but also scale very well as well so make sure you check that out and just other small things like this you want to make sure your location settings are correct a lot of people will select the country 
and then ignore this section here which is under the fold or under the collapsible option here you want to make sure you're ticking people in or regularly in your included locations because otherwise basically having this option here your ads can show anywhere and you really don't want that now a very important thing here is just be patient you can't rush google a great sort of uh calculation if you like that i would go by let's say you're starting out with google ads or you're trying to relaunch it again give yourself an actual budget a 30 day or 60 day budget of what you're willing to lose let's say you know what you're what you're willing to spend on google ads and let's say you get no sales you're willing to lose that amount of money so a good example here let's say your budget is three thousand pounds for google i would set this budget at 50 pound a day because you're going to have 60 days at 50 pound a day ad spend that is a good amount of time to slowly allow the account to optimize and by the 60 day period spending this amount a day you should start to see some consistency and you should be able to get to the point there where you're separating your winners into their own scaling campaigns and things like that so if you've got a three grand budget for example don't set your daily spend to 300 pounds because you're not going to have enough time for google to do its thing you've got to allow it a good amount of time it's not like facebook google does take its time uh, bid strategies again is another important thing i see people chop and change bid strategies all the time they might select maximize clicks on a shopping campaign and then the next day switch to a t row as and then two days later they'll go back to maximize clicks because it's not getting any spend pick a strategy and just leave it max clicks for example if you're making a new shopping campaign if you, and you're starting with maximize clicks you know allow it the time to optimize you know allow it to get 50 plus conversions and then consider switching to a target roas it's all about gathering data with google it's all about giving it time to optimize important point for performance max here if you're seeing too many branded terms contributing towards the revenue that pmax is generating you can go ahead in the campaign settings and exclude your brand in terms this is very good essentially for focusing more on acquiring new customers Whereas if you keep your branded terms in Pmax, you might then find, it doesn't happen with all accounts, it happened for mine, you might find that a lot of your conversions and revenue that Pmax is attributing to that campaign, it will show as branded terms. And then when you look at a graph like this or your stats like this, you might think the campaign is doing better than it actually is. So I would personally exclude your branded terms because when you end up setting up a branded search campaign, at least then you're still going to be capturing this warm traffic and this is an example last 30 days of my uk businesses brand search campaign you can see only 15 pound a day budget but a 9.3 roas which i say it all the time it will always be your most profitable campaign and you don't need to spend a fortune on it and finally for this section have backup payment methods in your google ad account guys the amount of times i see people's ad accounts get suspended ads then stop running it completely messes up with performance because they've only got one payment method that method can get declined and google instantly will just they'll either turn all, they'll either turn off all the ads or they'll even just suspend the account so with mine i have two or three backup payment methods you know like four methods in total on the account so if anything ever were to go wrong with my primary method at least i've got three or four backup methods there simply just a way to avoid getting suspended because trust me it happens i see it all the time now finally getting someone to click on your google ad is just the first step what their experience is like on your website is arguably more important because that's what's going to determine whether they convert on your website or not and the amount of people that obviously have spammy looking shopify drop shipping stores and wonder why they're not getting any sales there are so many different things you can do to improve your conversion rate which will improve the profitability of your ads, will allow you to scale. And I've listed here the most important things that I think that you should look at and improve and change if you haven't done so already. One being product reviews, Amazon and the success of products on Amazon are built off good product reviews. So start emailing your customers, asking them for product reviews with videos, photos, and make sure to publish them on your product pages so new customers are seeing these for the first time you're instantly building that trust whereas if they go to a product page with no reviews they have no idea what other customers have experienced with this product they have no idea what people think of the quality so reviews are incredibly important and there are a million different apps you can use for that 
again referring back to my previous point with the images for merchant center having high quality pictures on your landing page is again very important a lot of people are again they're using shopify uh, aliexpress images sorry sorry that are blurry they're the same as everyone else there are a million ways you can you know you can order your own product if you're drop shipping and take your own pictures that are going to be 10 times better than what you see on aliexpress you can use ai tools now to enhance product pictures to make them higher quality slightly different so you know if you're watching this video you will know if you're using a poor quality product image change it you'll be surprised of how much it can help having good quality content on your website you want concise and easy to use funnels on your website and that means from product page to checkout you don't want a million different pop-ups you want to have simple add to cart button you want your sticky add to cart button as well i would go for a slide cart checkout rather than a checkout page because that's one less page to load and one less sort of obstacle for a customer to go through so what make sure when people click add to cart slide cart pops out and they can simply click the checkout button and they're already on the checkout page now a controversial conversation is always going to be is the one page checkout better is the three page checkout better on shopify i personally still use the three page checkout based on the fact that especially when the one page checkout launched there were so many issues with it i just reverted back to three page checkout and never really have switched back but again it is something you can test if you've you know if you're getting a good amount of volume transparency is key don't hide your shipping information in the footer of your website behind a link if you offer good shipping times and you know have these on your product page because these really will help boost your conversion rate make your returns policy easy to find because a lot of people will wonder what the returns policy is if they're a first time customer and they think okay i want to order but what happens if i don't like the product they want to know this information just in case they want to send a product back and i guess make an effort as well to have a good customer friendly returns policy because the amount of again drop shippers that will say to customers oh you need to return your product back to china at your own expense that's not a customer friendly returns policy and you're not going to build good relationships with your customers if you know that's the case so please do consider this it's one of those things that you might not think is very important but trust me it really is site speed optimization again really helpful not only for improving your conversion rate because if a customer comes to your website it doesn't load properly or takes forever they're just going to exit out and they're just going to go click on another ad and again in terms of the organic reach for your website on google it's important to have a fast website because Google will prioritize and push your website organically. If it's fast, if it's slow, they're not gonna do you any favors. If you're not sure how to optimize your site speed, things like image file sizes and things like that, you can hire experts on Upwork and Fiverr to go through your entire website and improve this for you. Not something that I've done myself, I've hired people to do it for me. These two here go hand in hand to increase your average order value. You know, you see on Amazon product pages, they've got frequently bought together sections just below the description or add to cart button. You know, they put bundles together where people can add more products to their cart. And it's just a great way of increasing your average order value. You can have upsells in your cart as well. Very important. And upsells are after your checkout process as well. Any place that you can put an upsell that isn't sort of getting in the way of people checking out is a bonus you know don't start having pop-ups when people add to cart or oh, do you want to add this as well just have them in the cart and post purchase because they're not in the way and at least they're still being seen without being annoying to customers as well and finally again i'm referring to amazon a lot in this video and there's a reason they're a trillion dollar company put it that way and that is to have an easy to use and always visible search bar so even when people are scrolling down their product your product pages sorry have your search bar still placed at the top of your website so people can use it at all times. And this screenshot here is just an example of my US business. Last 30 days, I've had 2,500 searches on my search bar that have generated almost $13,000 in sales. And I believe the statistic is that people who search on, on your website are three to four times more likely to convert. I believe that's the metric. So very important and a lot of people don't use this okay so it turns out i can't use my camera and charge at the same time that is it for this video today guys if you need any help or sort one-to-one of -one help with google ads or anything shopify related just drop me a message on instagram and if you've got any other video suggestions obviously just drop them in the comments down below but thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video